again, Kentopolis. This is Dr. Kendo, and we're here with another Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor commentary. This is where I create your favorite characters in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor, which is only a feature on the Wii U and PC versions of this game. And so we're going to start off with a rock star as the source object for today's creations, which is going to be some main characters from Attack on Titan. And so, uh, so we're going to start off with Aaron right here. And so the rock star, we are going with the male rock star specifically. Notice that I took off the head, the arms, the legs, all of that good stuff. And so I'm moving around some things with the grids and uh, here we can actually see now that there's these kind of custom color patterns. So when you click on that paintbrush down in the bottom middle of the screen, you can then on your left side where you see all of the paint colors and stuff like that, you can create your own custom color. I'm sure most of you that regularly follow my series know that, but just in case anybody did need to know that, we've colored the jacket accordingly and everything for this kind of soldier's uniform here for Aaron, and so we're gonna go with Edwin. This is part of Maxwell's big family, and so Edwin has uh, this front arm right here, and then we'll take the back arm as well for Edwin, and I think we're actually gonna use this for all of the characters today, so be looking out for Edwin a little bit later on as the stamp that we're gonna use, and so this is looking good for a start, but of course we have a long way to go, so let's go ahead and I guess do the belt next up. We're gonna take a glow stick, and so the glow stick, I'm gonna paint this kind of darkish brown right here, and we'll shrink it a little bit and turn it around and here we can put it down kind of near the pants and stuff of this rock star and so that'll be good for the belt at least the start of it right here and so then I'm going to type in a minus sign and after we've got that we can basically make this be this strap kind of going across his chest you know right there it looks like we've got it in the right spot too because the rock star it did have kind of a line right there already so we can sort of go over that line and that looks good so I'm going to take a marshmallow this time and we'll paint the marshmallow a little bit silvery gray right here and we'll put it on both of these straps that we've just added basically the belt and that other part on his chest and so we'll put that down and I'm gonna take a buckle for the others so you know the, this kind of soldier's outfit has a lot of these straps right here on the side as well and so for that it, this won't look exactly a hundred percent to the show but in Scribble Knots kind of the universe you know the u universe of characters I guess is shorter they're just sort of shorter and stockier I guess overall and so with that we'll take this buckle on both sides and basically have that be those side straps down there at their side and so that's looking good. So next up let's go ahead and type in Ludwig and so Ludwig is gonna be uh, one of Maxwell's brothers again. He's got a big family but the reason that I kind of like to use them if you're going for a little bit more realistic I guess stamps then often they work well because the legs are a little bit skinnier or whatever or taller and uh, often a scribble knots kind of default human or humanoid character usually has sort of wide legs not all of them, but a lot of them. You guys know what I'm talking about, I'm sure, if you've played this game. And so a monkfish, we actually took that back tail of the monkfish. And so I'm giving it sort of a splotchy color pattern. It sort of has all this kind of weathering pattern in it. And uh, we're going to paint it that maroony kind of color. Maroonish brown, I guess. So that's going over the pants, but we do see a little bit of the pants showing up right there. And so I'm going to go with an equal sign because there are also two kind of belt strap type things on their thighs, you know, just the upper leg part right here so an equal sign will actually be one stamp that can make two things we always love that when a stamp can kind of do multiple parts with just that one stamp a hatchet fish we took this really kind of thin side fin that it has and uh, so kind of going back with that theme of stamps and stuff like that each one of these pieces that we're putting on like this glow stick here for the leg straps is a stamp and so this game does have a limit to how many stamps you can use so we're gonna go with flower next and this is just sort of a an out there sort of creative way I guess to make a symbol and stuff so he's got the uh, emblem right there patched onto his shoulder and so we just did that as flower. Now we're gonna start doing some pockets and stuff right there on the jacket that he's wearing and so that's marshmallow twice so one for each side and then that same hatchet fish fin and this actually when we do the second hatchet fish right there that fin that actually made the stamp limit error show up. Basically a warning that says hey you can't use any more stamps so let's go ahead and go into the properties editor here pretty soon and during this kind of section of these creation episodes that I do I like to read background information and fun facts about the characters and the shows and stuff so let's go ahead and talk about it Attack on Titan is a Japanese manga series that began in 2009 set in a world where humanity lives in cities surrounded by humongous walls set up as a defense against the Titans it could be obvious but these Titans are gigantic humanoid types who eat humans and overall just wreak havoc and so we are creating 
Aaron, of course, and uh, we're also going to make Mikasa and Armin today as they appear in the anime TV adaptation for AOT. That's for today's Scribble Knots episode here. We'll also probably try to get a look at creating Aaron's Titan form at the end here, and I know that there are other characters that could be made, and this series that I do is based on most popular, most requested objects each week, so definitely remember to specifically request what you want to see. Anyway, I don't think that I've seen enough of the show to be considered a true fan, but the very little that I have seen of Attack on Titan is actually exceeding my expectations so far. Feel free, of course, to leave a comment about what you think of the show, and I hope you enjoy the remaining creations that we have here. We started off with the head as the source object, because now we're going to be making the head for Aaron, and of course that's uh, to utilize stamp space the best that we can. We can create the head and the body separately, and so that's why we are doing this head separate. A golden egg was kind of the main part of the head that went over that head source object, because the golden egg is a little bit better shape for us, and we turned it upside down. And so there's two pieces of hair there that kind of uh, one sort of in our top right and to our bottom left. Basically those are a dog tail. You can either type that in or if you're in Scribble Knots Unlimited you can actually access the 29 page library of shapes. A pom pom is sort of there in the middle kind of to our left side a little bit. It's a big puff of hair. A comb over we just did twice and use that for some extra strands of hair. I'm gonna go with the mango actually to be his ear and so we'll move that around. This is gonna take a lot of just moving things, adjusting things as we're placing them, because often if you're creating the hair kind of custom like this in Scribble Knots Unlimited, rather than using a default human or humanoid that they have in this game or some other kind of monster or something, and just using that head, that would get you possibly a close representation of the hair that you want, but it wouldn't be the head shape that we need probably for this. It's kind of a more, we want like that slender anime look to it, but also we're getting a lot of the detail in the hair that we will end up wanting and appreciating at least I hope you guys appreciate it. I know that I will uh, kind of appreciate that I did it this way rather than just choosing one human or something and working off of that. We used hemisphere for the white of the eyes, so that's twice, of course, and toothpick for both of the eyebrows there above those hemispheres. P-E-A, that spells P, of course, to be the iris here. So that's the color for Aaron's eyes. And uh, we're typing in a jellyfish, but we did just take a scorpion's upper middle tail piece. And so that combined with this jellyfish upper tentacle piece, which basically look, just kind of looks like a black line, that all makes his nose. So now let's go with a wart, and we can shrink this down pretty small after we make it black, kind of all the way black right there. That'll be for the pupil, and we're kind of making him look a little bit off to the side, I guess, like more to us, our side. And so I'm going to go with an eyebrow, actually. This will be the start of his mouth. We're going to need another one, though, so we painted this black, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a somber look, but I'm basing these, usually I kind of have one or two Google images for each of these characters, and so you'll see a comparison image at the end of this episode, and we'll also grab a nursery fish right now, the fin of the nursery fish. There is a fin, I guess, on the side, sort of near its head, and so we're making that basically be this bottom lip curve. You know, the art style, I guess, in Attack on Titan, a lot of them sort of have that bottom lip line right there that distinguishes it, and so we'll use a nursery fish for that. You want to make it big enough, yet small enough to where it doesn't look like some kind of soul patch or something. And so here we've typed in an octopus and notice that I've zoomed in. You want this red tentacle that's on the left side, but all the way in the back. So it's the farthest back little octopus tentacle piece right there. And so it sort of looks like a question mark or a cane type shape. That octopus tentacle piece specifically, we can put here in the mango to be this like kind of curvature in the ear. Can make it look, I guess, more like an ear than it would if we just left it how it was. And so here I'm accessing that 29 page library once again. If you're in Scribble Knots Unmasked, you may need to actually type in something like Rima or a character that has just one solid arm color. Basically, we're making this be his neck. It's a 20th page uh, arm from the 29 page library. It's like a succubus, but it's not if you type in succubus that won't get you exactly what you need. We're going with a female beauty's back arm now, which is kind of the equivalent of another 29 page library arm shape. It has a bend in it and everything. That's actually going to be the collar. So we created the neck and kind of the collar, the upper part of the collar right here for the jacket. We added that onto our head object here for Aaron because we didn't have enough stamp space to have it on the body. Hopefully it looks all right. We went into the properties editor right now and here on the equipment tab, you need to be sure that you do this. Check off 
off that circle down there near the bottom that says can be worn on the face like glasses, you've got to fill in that circle because that basically will allow when we put the head object into the hands of our body object, so Aaron's head into the body of uh, our Aaron body creation basically, it'll actually make that head object that we created go where the head is supposed to go, you know, act like it's wearing glasses basically and that's what it does. We'll see that in a little bit, but we're gonna go with our next uh, creation, our next character, which is gonna start off with a ghost hunter and this is gonna be for Mikasa and I love this character. The little that I know about the show, I just know that I love her. She's amazing. And so we painted the ghost hunter mostly white, but notice that there is a little bit of tan there where the armpit, I guess, would be, you know, where the arm is going to go. That's just in case anything is showing as this jacket is going to be placed down. We've got a great white shark. We're going to use that fin that's sort of in the front and down below on the great white shark. We have to create Mikasa's jacket that uh, for her soldier's outfit here. We have to sort of make it more from scratch, whereas when we did the rock star, the male rock star, that actually had a lot of it on it already. And so a fortune cookie we can do twice, and that'll be for where the collar is up right there. And uh, then I'm going to go with a dagger tooth kind of for this last part, and this will be on the side that's to our right. Of course, it's the character's left, but uh, that's just for the jacket. It's kind of like we're looking at all of these characters in Scribble Knots. Whenever I create in this series, it's most of the time you're sort of looking at the character from a quarter turn view. So it's not straight on like they're straight looking at you horizontally or anything like that But then it's not a completely side view. It's in between those two So glow stick twice for the straps of course one's the belt and one is the chest strap just above the chest And uh, we took a squid upper tentacle piece basically Mikasa She does have this button-down shirt underneath that jacket right there tofu We used uh, for the belt buckle piece It's kind of that buckle outer part and then the belt within that is gonna be the minus sign So that looks good and so then I can just type in buckle right here and uh, we can actually put those down for those side straps once again and a buckle for the top strap. Monkfish will go with that same back tail piece once again with that same weathered kind of pattern to it, color pattern, and that maroonish brown color as well and that's going to go in that same spot just on the pants, over the pants I should say. Cesium, it looks kind of like it's spelled like casium but it's cesium is how that's pronounced. That's actually going to be for this scarf that Mikasa has. So now we'll go with Ed when we're going to take that front arm to be the front arm here and then we'll also again do the back arm after we've got this situated and I uh, need to make sure that it's sized correctly as well and so Edwin will take that type it in and grab the back arm and so that looks pretty good right here it's all coming together as I was hoping so this is uh, going good so far we'll take Ludwig again and so we'll grab uh, the back leg of this character you know the Ludwig brother looks good so we've got both legs down now hatchet fish we can take that same side fin this is almost doing it exactly as we created Aaron now for the legs. They're mostly going to be identical. Uh, we can have just a little bit of change maybe in sizing and positioning and stuff just to fit the overall scale of this character in comparison. There's the stamp limit after we got that one last glow stick in for the other leg, that back leg. And so that looks good. So we'll name her and uh, we can move on now to creating her head. So of course, let's start off with the head as the source object. Usually I start off with the head as the source object and just go over it. I don't... I rarely use the head anymore as the base shape. Everybody can create how they want to create. One of the reasons that I start out with the head as the source object is because I know where it's going to be placed and positioned pretty well. It's kind of an overall guide for me. It's like uh, I know how it's going to match up when we put it onto the body character. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, let's go with a comb over now. The comb over is sort of a good stamp for like some strands of hair. I like how it has these two points down at the bottom of the comb over right now. So we've got two comb overs here. Here. One on each side, basically. This is going to be uh, a little bit complicated, and I hope that it looks good in the end, of course, but up until then, you're probably going to be like, what in the world is he doing? A lot of my creations, honestly, kind of start like that. It's just like, how is he going to make this look like this? Well, uh, right here, we've got another comb over for the back after we did ivory. We did one ivory up at the top because we didn't want her hair to be parted so much right there on the, the part of her hair, so I had an ivory fill in that kind of excess space, but then we used another ivory for a strand of hair that goes over her eyes. You know, you can see that sort of on our left side and it's curving to the right. We've got surfboard. We did that twice. If you paint the surfboard all the way black, it can be some more strands of hair. We got another surfboard here in the front and it's going to go over the front of her face. Hemisphere, we can type in once again and that'll be for the eyes, the white of the eyes right here. And so let's get that going. And uh, this is again going to take a lot of kind of adjusting as we're going along. So, you know, once you put down, let's say the hemispheres, you're like, oh, maybe I need to move the hair over this way. You know, or 
are. You put down a strand of hair and then later on after everything's in there, you're like, wait, I need to adjust that. So we're going to go with the wake skate. That's like uh, for wakeboarding. We'll take the wake skate to not only be the eyebrow that's on the right, but also right above the hemispheres. It's kind of like she's going to have these eyelashes really faint. Just going to add some extra detail there on top of those hemispheres. But we can actually use a pitching mound. It'll be a little big. So you want to shrink it down as small as it can. And after you paint it all the way black, the pitching mound can be for the other eyebrow because again, we're looking at this character from a slight angle, a slight turn. And so with that, one eyebrow is a little bit longer, just the one that we're closer to, I guess, by the plane of vision. And so I've got that same kind of jellyfish, nursery fish combo there for the nose. And we took a cat tail. You can either type it in or grab it from the 29 page library for in Scribble Knots Unlimited, paint it all the way black. And that's for the mouth right here. We turned it over a little bit and used the nursery fish once again for a bottom lip piece. And so I did another surfboard piece that goes over her right eye. It's the, or yeah, I guess it's her left eye, but it's to our right, I should say. Hemispheres, once again, will now be for the iris, the color in her eyes right there. And so then I'm going to take those nursery fish fins. This is actually going to be where we reach the stamp limit because we used one nursery fish for the eye that's to our left. That's her right eye. But then on the other side, we're going to use two nursery fish pieces to round it out. And they're both going to be a little bit smaller than that one that's to our left, the right eye, of course. I hope you're following me as we go along. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to need to, of course, script it here under the properties editor. So go into the equipment tab. Once again, just as a reminder, can be worn on the face like glasses. Fill that in. Third circle down on that bottom half of the screen. And so that looks good. So here is our Mikasa head after we've made all of the adjustments and everything. And uh, honestly, sometimes it's tough to tell what are they going to look like until we put them onto the body. Well, we can see here that the Mikasa head is a little bit too big, but it's also kind of high up for comparison. So you can see that I put the head basically all you have to do is just grab that head piece and give it to the body object. And so if it's not where you want it to be or not looking appropriate for you, go ahead and edit the body, edit that torso object. And uh, once we do that, we can turn on these green grids. They show all of the moving parts of your character where you can attach things. And so there's a head grid. It's that kind of big empty green space where the head is supposed to be. You can click on that head grid and in essence, just move it down, up, left, right, wherever you feel that you need to move it for your head to be adjusted and uh, put in the correct position, basically. So here, if we copy Aaron's design, you can literally press copy and then make another one. Uh, basically, there will be uh, a lot of similarities, but it's going to be that Armin right here. His body is going to be a little bit shorter, basically. We just wanted it to be shorter. And so I also added in a glow stick kind of in the middle there, as well as a half rest. That's one of the changes on that chest strap. We used a half rest if you want to use that instead for the belt buckle design. And that glow stick has a kind of black and whitish color pattern. It's basically supposed to imply that he has a button down shirt as well because his shirt underneath that jacket is different than Aaron's is. So we wanted to make sure that that was conveyed through our creation here. And so that looks good. So here is the arm and head using a lot of those same principles that we used on our last characters. Well, uh, we basically have dots as the eyes right there, but we can have that nursery fish same for the bottom lip. The wake skate right there is for the eyebrows as well as for his mouth. The comb over hair pieces, surfboards down below, those kind of tiny hair strands that are in between and all around it. Ivory, we actually used four times there for the bangs, you know, where his hair is kind of going over his forehead and his eyebrows a little bit. Scorpion bottom middle tail pieces for that uh, nose right there. And so one last reminder, we can say, of course, the head should be worn on the face like glasses. Looks good. We filled in that circle. So we've done our job. Let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit smaller, actually. I just want to be sure that this head isn't way too big. And so let's see, we've got the arm and body here without a head, so it needs the head. Let's go ahead and type that in, arm and head. And so that's good. So we'll put that down and notice that it's just a little bit like his shoulders are sort of shrugging, kind of. So again, you can go in and edit the arm and body. You just tap or click on that. And then basically, again, turn on these green grids. We're going to move that head grid just up, maybe a smidgen up. We don't need to do it too much. So that's probably pretty good. We I think we've got it where we want it. So let's go ahead and actually jump to something else. A uh, little bit of extra for this episode. We've created the Titan version of Aaron. Mostly a simple design. I think I just wanted to give you guys something extra but didn't have a lot of time this week. You can take a bodybuilder as the source object. Use Tiny. That's one of Maxwell's many brothers. Again, Tiny is the arms. So we can show you what that looks like right here after typing in Tiny for the front and the back arm. And then we've got a uh, Minotaur. You can take that Minotaur or thigh piece, you know, that upper leg right there, and that'll actually be for the Titan legs here. And so then I'm 
going to go with webbed feet, and that can actually be for the feet down below for our Titan version of Aaron. Looking good. And a gelatin. That was the last piece that we don't want to forget because the gelatin is there as the neck. And actually, you can probably thin that out a little bit more. It doesn't need to be that wide. So otherwise, just paint it accordingly. Now, here's one design. I'm not going to probably keep this design, but here is one idea that you can do if you want to have the Aaron Titan head right there. We've got a giant enemy crab, one of those bottom leg pieces of the enemy crab. There are two of them there as bangs kind of going over his eyes a little bit and eyebrows. We actually do have eyebrows for the eyebrows. A whalefish fin for the white of the eyes. P and a wart is for the color and then the pupil, respectively. And a nose for the nose. We actually use grills three times for the top teeth and then three times for the bottom teeth. So those match up. G-R-I-L-L-Z. Comb overs for all that hair on both sides. And then we also had hair, just hair by itself, as some stamps behind all of that hair that you saw. So it's just to add some back hair, basically. I don't mean hair on his back. I mean like hair that's in the back. All right. But here's probably the design that I feel I'll use because I think it's a little bit better. This one actually has the ears on it. We didn't have enough stamp space for the ears on that last design. So we basically removed two pieces of grill. So now there's only two rows, one row on the top that has two and then one row on the bottom that has two. And then we just typed in a shark and we took that back bottom fin of the shark and that's what the ears are. And so again, this is a uh, stamp space is gonna be limited there so I couldn't add any details there into the ears but that's okay I mean that looks uh, crazy it looks like those protruded ears that the Titans have so let's go ahead and actually see what this looks like when we put it down onto the field and so here we actually probably could do with making it a little bit bigger but let's go ahead and see what happens when it fights these things these are the chimeras that are actually on this level by default this is the castle level on Scribble Knots Unlimited and uh, there's these chimeras right here so I'm just making Aaron take care of them Titan Aaron that is. So after we've made him hostile, it looks like he will attack and get into a fight with these, and I think he's gonna have no problem taking them down. I mean, he's got a ton of health. We definitely scripted him with a lot of health. You could even script him with more attack. Probably a titan would make mincemeat of these things in real life. So that looks good. You, you've got basically the general idea of what it looks like for his attack animation and all of that. And so again, if we were to compare it kind of how it is right now to our characters that we've got, you know, obviously we don't need Eren to be like in the same picture or anything, but notice how that Titan isn't, I mean, it's big, but it's not extraordinarily big compared to them. You could even just add the adjective large or big to it, but you can also just size up the head and the body a lot. You can increase its size in the object editor, and probably that is going to be a little bit more accurate, although, you know, the world of Scribblenauts Unlimited is different than the real world or the worlds that these gaming characters come from. So please never expect things to be like the 100% spitting image ratio exactly carbon copy figure, I guess, if that makes sense. But yes, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Remember, twitch.tv slash drkendo for a live stream every Monday, sometimes other days too. Most popular, most requested every single Sunday for this series on YouTube here. And I will catch you guys on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. And down the road up twist and turn.